it's Sunday, so seems like a good time to do a an Instagram live feed for uh, Studio Sunday. Here's the current sculpture I've been working on. We'll call it, uh, well, currently the working title is Never Full. As you can see, it's a oversized stomach with a variety of food substances at the uh, base of it. And as you can see on the back side, I don't have any food substances on the back side. So today I think I'll do a little bit of work addressing and keeping. Let's see if I can make this a little bit more like that. Anyway, addressing and keeping uh, imagery going around the bottom. Originally when I started this piece, I thought, you know, I did the stomach and I'm of course gonna put a little, tiny little head up here, the wide open mouth, I think. Um, and I was just gonna have the base kind of be a base. It wasn't really much going on there. And as I looked at it, as you do many pieces, as you, it started to irritate me. It needed something. So we began adding the things that, well, I personally, in my past history, and still do today, have a tendency to resort to fill that void, if you will, unhealthy relationships with foods. Um, so I started putting those things that are there. So we got some Reese's peanut butter cups, got a little Snicker bar, still in the wrapper though, hamburger, big cheese, pizza hanging off the edge, mmm, donut, Simpson style, a little bit of Hostess cupcakes here. And <clears throat> now I don't, gosh. It's like, what do I put on the backside? You know, something that's gonna fit with the theme and fit with what we're doing. Um, I think, I might try, I don't know. Maybe for a hot dog? Kinda got a nice space here, we'll try for a hot dog. <clears throat> In a bun. So, start with uh, rolling over this big old bag of clay, ripping off some, and forming it into place. Yeah, it's just the way it is. Well, here we go. Boom. Clay. Uh, like I said, I don't normally, I've never done, I don't think I've ever done any kind of work while talking at the same time on Instagram. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, see if I can do it well. So, the way I usually start is I'll just rip a section of clay off and start thinking about the shape that I'm gonna put onto this piece. Uh, I've been keeping this piece under wraps, wrapped with cloth, and then of course wrapped again with plastic to really try and keep the shape and the form damp enough so I can keep working. Um, so let's start, I guess I need to figure out how I want this hot dog to actually come off the piece. And I'm thinking I may have it come into this section here, <clears throat> coming down and coming off of it, much like kind of done with the hamburger here and this, you know, the, the, everything else that's blending into the piece, uh, going into the base. So I'm gonna take this little piece of clay, I'm gonna start pounding it into a shape, and I will tell you, I am probably the worst person to follow as far as uh, proper techniques because I treat clay very badly. Um, I don't score things. I don't use slip. I, uh, I make things too thick. Um, I do all the things they tell you not to do in, in class. Um, and that's just because I'm a horrible, horrible, horrible human being when it comes to clay. Um, and I found that the things that we always talk about and do just don't uh, always have to be done. Um, at least not to the extent we claim has to be done. And I know there are some people I see out there, Charlie, who's probably saying, no, don't say those things. 
people's work's gonna be exploding because they're not paying attention. And you're right, their work probably will explode because they're not paying attention to what they're doing or learning their material. And um, yeah, so if you're following along, um, don't 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 do what I'm doing. Yeah, that's the ticket. Um, so here we go. <clears throat> Slap it in place. Kind of look at it, shape it. This big old chunk of clay right here is going to become a tiny hot dog and bun. Uh, or at least part of a tiny hot dog and bun into this section going back we'll cut some more off of there look around for one of my various cutting tools uh, the handy dandy old Fetla knife works really well for making things fit into the section you want it to do. Little angle. And this is this is how I do these pieces, right? They're there. Yeah, this is how I've been building sculptures for quite a while, and it works for me. Now I will say, once I take the clay off of here, I will probably end up digging this out a little bit from the inside if I can reach it, and if I can't. We're just gonna dry it super, super slow so it doesn't break it. Yes, Katie, you gotta learn those rules to break them. Uh, and don't be afraid to break them because, you know, well, don't be afraid to break. Don't be afraid of the failure when you break them because you will have that failure. Now, for attaching this piece, I will actually use one of my favorite favorite materials in the studio plain old stinky white vinegar um it is a fantastic i don't i you know it's what they call i guess in clay terms we'll call it a super wetting agent it works amazing for attaching parts no slip just some plain old white vinegar I, actually there's probably a little bit of slip in there because i've been using this bottle of plain white vinegar for and refilling it over the years so it has got decades or not well it probably actually has almost a decade of 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 grime inside there and i just keep pouring in more white vinegar and so it's probably some cone six clay in there and some o4 clay in there but so now we're gonna place it in here get that sectioned into place and then uh, well, I am going to take my handy dandy little tool here. Uh, this is actually the improper way to use this tool. This is not the proper way to use this tool. This is a throwing stick, so you can reach down into pots and, and work on the inside on the wheel. But it makes an awesome smacker. Um, it's actually just the right kind of... I have found for this piece especially, it's the right amount of weight and thickness uh, size-wise, so I can really kind of get up in there and give it some good, good old smack of ruin. Um, if I'm attaching bigger pieces, I use a two by four. Why a two by four? Because it's what I had in my studio. Um, so you don't have to go out and buy fancy tools. Sometimes you just pull them out of other things and start using them. Now, that's a pretty well attached piece there. It's not coming up. Uh, I then like to come back in and I have, and I learned this from his old Cajun. Some of you may know him, Rod, Randy Brodnax. And I have this amazing little tool. He likes to call them the rubber nipples. Rubber nipple? Uh, but they really are just, I mean, you can get them, um, they are, they are, they are color shapers for watercolor and they are truly great little silicone tips that just allow you to push the clay around where in my case, fat fingers don't always reach well. Uh, they do great for drawing into pots. They're just wonderful little tools. So if you haven't gotten any color shapers in your in your toolbox, uh, go get some. They last a long time. My first one, 
I got It's Going On, I think, about nine, ten years old. And it is still just amazing. This is not my first one. This is one of my newer ones. It's only about, uh, it's only like six years old. But it is fantastic. It's also one of my smaller ones, uh, which is perfect for this part of getting underneath and creating these kind of ridges I like to have in the sculpture, make those shadows appear, and then I come back in, smooth in with my finger a little bit, and just really start to make this kind of happen. Uh, I really want to eventually break this thing, but it's my only one I've got in this size, and I you know, don't want to break the handle just yet because I can get it in there. But it's great uh, for getting right down into those bits and pieces and pushing the clay from the base and the applied, we'll call it hot dog and bun. That's what we're going for today. Uh, in there, move that out of the way. And I know I'm trying to keep this in view for you guys to see, but sometimes I gotta move my head into the, the screen and really get down there and look. Uh, if you see me taking my glasses off as we get into the detail part, that's because I'm getting old and I need new glasses. Uh, having to start holding my phone out about to my, well, arm length to actually read the screen, so it makes it, don't get old. Uh, I'm probably gonna end up with those words people don't like to say, the bifocals, but eh, it's just part of life. So, working it in there, and then I'll come back with my handy dandy fingertips, smooth things around, get that base nice and smooth again. And what's nice is I come in here with this tool and my finger, and work it where I generally wouldn't even be able to get my, my hand into place. And really kind of get all up in there. And make it all happy, happy. That's the plan is to make it all happy, happy. And helping to make it happy, happy and help with the, the visual. Yes, it is a little Debbie cake. Little Debbie Hostess, well actually this is a little, this, this is a Hostess cupcake. And um, one of the reasons why I put this on here, for years, my family, we, we were scuba divers and my whole family was scuba divers. My dad did it when I was growing up. It was like his little side gig. He loved to do scuba diving. And so he would teach it and we would have to travel to Panama City, Florida um, so he could go and certify his students and it almost never failed. We went and it fell on my birthday and my family never remembered to buy cakes. So my birthday cakes would be hostess cupcakes with a candle put in it. It's good times y'all, good times. Hostess cupcake candle. So that's why this guy's on here. It's a Reminder of years past, the Hostess Cupcake in place. So I'm gonna come in, just kind of start to smooth out the bun in here, make this little hot dog bun smooth into the, the base a little bit. I'm gonna have it actually disappear into the base on the back side here. But this is what it's about, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's about forming the clay into what you're you want it to be. Uh, and like I say, this whole current series is still, you know, I'm still dealing with body image and layers. And so in order to do this, I mean, I'm finally comfortable enough where I'm not making them abstract. I'm actually putting myself into the pieces and in putting myself into the pieces, I'm challenging myself to add more imagery functional or not really. I guess this isn't really functional imagery. It's uh but actual parts instead of just painting things on the surface or making stencils and doing it that way, really kind of putting it into place here. 
So we're gonna go ahead and work on this hot dog here a little bit. Kinda give it a little bit of shaping. And what's nice is since I still have this big fat chunk of clay on here, I can keep working it. Now we all know what a hot dog in a bun looks like. It's gonna have, we gotta make the hot dog itself. We gotta have the bun. So what I'm gonna do is come back to my handy dandy rubber nipple. Uh, how many sculptures will I make in this series? Um, you know, I, I, I wish I had an answer for that. This is actually probably going to be something that, I don't know, it's almost like it's never stopping at this point, Katie. It's, um, I, so far, I did, I don't know, I guess there were maybe 10, 15, 20, maybe even 30 of my wheel thrown um, as I used to call them, the grotesque, the elegance pieces, where they were just all wheel thrown and shaped and, and, and abstract and undulations and fat folds and such. Um, and then I moved into the constraint part of the series, which is still ongoing. Um, and in that one, I've got, uh, I think I got like another 10 or 15 for that particular series. Um, three of which are still sitting behind me. I still have to actually finish them, uh, get a final firing on them and, and get them mounted to their display boards. Uh, and then right now, just in the ones where I'm actually front and center as far as imagery on it, this is number five? Yeah, I got three in the kiln, one drying. So this is number five. So we're talking so far, I think I'm up to probably, I guess, 35, 40 pieces. And um, I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Uh, it's one of those series that just grows as I work the series. I see something new or I delve deeper into it and a new question comes up and I've just got to ask that question. I have to have to answer it, you know, I have to, I have to answer the question. And, and that's the, uh, so I'm starting to look like a talk a little bit. Um, and that's, so yeah, we're at, we're at probably 40 to 35 pieces to, to get an answer. And as far as how many more, that answer is uh, unknown because I don't know. Um, it's just going to be, uh, well, I guess it'll just going to be however many I need to make. Um, and and what's really interesting is that while my, my, my functional wear usually has like these weird uh, post-apocalyptic things and layers it also all stems and comes from and has parts from the series too so even I mean, if I take into account the functional pieces I make uh, then the number skyrockets so it's uh, if you own one of my functional pieces you own something that was based in and has and comes from this sculptural series so here we have just a very quick layout of the hot dog going into the piece, into the bun. I'm gonna blend it off into the background here so that the hot dog kind of bends into the piece a little bit and we'll come around and just let it disappear into the back of the base here uh, and concentrate on making what goes in the front here. So hot dogs should always be slightly bigger than the bun. Um, it should hang off. It should. That's a that's a bread to meat ratio thing. You know, I don't understand why you know hot dogs and, and buns being longer than hot dogs. It just doesn't make sense to me. So you got to really kind of get in there and you know get yourself the proper size bun. So I'm gonna sit here and work on this proper size bun, uh, which is just taking a little bit of shaping to get my line drawn in that I want to now carve down a little bit and build up the hot dog a little bit. 
so it will all fit in the proper spot. For carving down, I use, uh, primarily I'm using this little Kemper, cheap Kemper tool. Um, I don't even remember where I got I got it out of some pack. It's been hanging about for a while. It is probably the cheapest of the cheap tools, but this particular little guy just works so wonderful at carving away this wet to even leather hard clay too, which is great. Does a wonderful job there. Carve this down a little bit. And this is it. I mean, this is this is how I'm currently making these sculptures. You know, um, we're gonna hope we don't have a huge failure rate in the making process, uh, the drying process, and the firing process. Uh, so we've kind of carved these down and make this bun a little bit lower than the hot dog. I think I might even come in here and put like some ketchup on the hot dog. Figure out, maybe do a little, little coil ketchup roll around there. Uh, try and get this to be a little more rounded because hot dogs are round, they're not flat on the top. So I'm taking my fingers to help round the piece out, giving it a little bit of squeezing, squeezing. I'm gonna come in and Carve it down a little bit more on these back sides here. Uh, and it makes, that's why I like this tool is I can get it right down in there with that, that corner of that V and really kind of refine the line coming back. It just works so well. Uh, there we go, right on in there. And then don't want to waste the clay, so stick it back on my little pile of clay over there. And then move right on through. So, moving through. Then we have to put a little bit of, raise this up a little bit. I think we're gonna come in with just a little bit of coil across the top there to build up the hot dog. Uh, glazing, you know, I, I'm, I've, I, I am a matte glaze kind of person. Um, I will definitely be using um, Amico underglazes on these pieces because they are, well, they're fabulous and they give me the colors that I, I know will work. Being that these are sculptures, um, I, I'm, I'm not gonna really glaze them. I'm, they're not gonna, they're not gonna have, they're not gonna, be shiny. They're not gonna have typical glazes over the top of them. I, they don't need them, right? They're not functional. And I kind of find that glaze, I mean, I used to glaze sculptures um, and I never was thrilled with a lot of the final glazing. Even though I would test, the shine of them sometimes just would take away from the piece itself. So I, I avoid the, I've started avoiding the, and have been for a while, the, 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 the clear glazing on things. Um, and going more with just underglazes, especially on, on sculptural pieces, because they, they stay matte and they still give me that wonderful color. Um, or in cases of some of the pieces, of course, letting the, the atmosphere of the wood kiln along with the underglazes give the final surface and then it'll be rough to smooth to shiny to matte just depending i have a tendency also to sand things back down so to to get that surface so these guys will probably just strictly be underglazed um so they are they, they have the color and they have the matte but they don't have a, a shine to them and they will be uh finished out that way i will probably also on some of them do maybe a little bit of cold finishing techniques. Um, definitely will probably come back in on some of them and sand back through layers of underglazes. I foresee having at least to do a minimum of 
three to four bisque fires on these just for setting under glazes. Hey, he's open. Uh, and they they will just, you know, be that way. They, 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 uh, and I was always, I was a little worried on, on my sculptural work of not actually kind of glazing them. And then I sat in on a, uh, Richard Notkin's talk that he did. I think it was, yeah, Richard Notkin. Uh, he was a juror for this, uh, the past USM's, um, National Ceramics show and he did this wonderful end of show discussion and he really commented about not glazing sculptures, you know, letting the sculptures, you know, they don't have to be shiny. They don't have to have those colorful glazes and such. And, and it really, it really just kind of solidified for me that yeah, the path I was on of not glazing my sculptures is a genuine path and one I'm gonna to continue to follow so, short answer, they're not going to be glazed. They're going to be underglazed and cold firing techniques. Maybe a little bit of wax. Um, if I want to have a slight shine to it, I'll probably wax the piece. Uh, but, man, this hot dog is really starting to look like a, a hot dog here. Not exactly one I would probably want to eat currently, but it's starting to look like a hot dog. And, of course, now i got to work on the front of this hot dog because... Front of hot dogs, and they make them, and they come out, and they do this weird little. Uh, when they they form them, they they you know got to get that that skin around them and packed in there, and so uh, don't like that. It's a little too fine point. So we flip over the little tool. We come in here and put that little. I guess it would be called the hot dog belly button. Put a little hot dog belly button in there. Maybe I can bring this camera over slightly so you can see the hot dog belly button that's going in. No, let me bring it down this way. All right, hold on, everybody. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. There's the hot dog belly button. Of course, there's the hot dog. And we're moving back. We're moving back. We're moving back. I felt like one of those, uh, one of those Dawsons in the museum. And we're moving. And we're moving. So now I've got this little hot dog belly button and now we've got to make those, those uh, ridges that come out of the hot dog belly button. They've got, you gotta have the ridges on the hot dog belly button, you know, they, you don't have those ridges on that hot dog belly button, what are you doing, right? So I gotta come in here with my little rubber tool, put the, the ridges into the hot dog belly button I guess that's what it's called. Is, does it even have a name? Does the end of a hot dog have a name where it looks like a belly button? I don't know. But we're going to call it the hot dog belly button. And if that's not the name, it shall soon become the hot... So from now on, especially since it's Super Bowl Sunday, there's going to be a lot of hot dogs being eaten. Just say, oh, look at that hot dog belly button. Help promote it for me, right? Well, hashtag hot dog belly button. Um, we kind of come in here and we're going to... Kind of push this in and create that, ooh, that form a little bit. This is where I got to move the piece so I can get to it. Hashtag hot dog belly button. That is just weird. Anyway, so this is going to be my studio, Sunday Studios, and I think, um... You know, I'm a teacher by trade, art teacher by trade. Let's go art teachers, y'all are awesome. And so I love to talk, actually I really hate to talk, but I love to talk about art and love to talk about my art. So I think every Sunday, about this time, I'm gonna be coming on and doing a little live feed of something I'm doing in the studio. Not sure how long they'll last, but, Let's see, you know. Ooh, it's kinda, it's looking like a hot dog belly button over here. Um, so yeah, we'll just pop that in place. Make them, there we go. 
Does anybody else talk to your sculptures while you're working on them? Or is it just me? You know, you're a pretty little sculpture. Yes, you are. Oh, you're going to be so twisted and sick when I'm done with you. Yes, yes, you are. Uh, let's go, sculpture. You can do it. Don't fall apart. Come on, Clay. Come on, hot dog belly button. Yeah, here we go. So, working on that hot dog belly button. It's actually looking pretty good. I like that hot dog belly button. We're going to come around. I got to shape out this bun on the bottom side a little bit, though. It's too flat looking on the bottom here. So, we got to, and also on the sides, still. So, we'll probably come over and add a little bit of clay here to these sides. Make it a little more rounded, but we're getting there. A little, add a little depth to it. Who's a pretty little hot dog belly button? You are. Oh, we're bringing it back down. All right, and we're moving, we're moving, we're moving. Hey, hey look, I got my hat on because it's cold in the studio. We'll bring it down. Oh, look at that hot dog belly button. I'm telling you, doesn't that hot dog belly button look good? And just start calling it the hot dog belly button, everybody. So, and it's just to keep on working. Um, I really kind of hadn't planned to truly work on this piece for this long. Uh, it wasn't originally supposed to take this long to do, but it, it has, and it is, and it will, which is okay by me. So, I'm going to thicken out this bun a little bit. Now, got to make it like one of those, uh, I don't know, I guess this is an Oscar Mayer hot dog, a ballpark, I, I I don't know. I'm not even sure what what the buns would be, but we come on in here, start adding in this little bit of clay. Break out my handy dandy whacking tool, the whacking tool, just to, to whack it into place and keep on keeping on. So yeah, this is it. If you got any questions, ask. I'll be happy to answer them. I'll answer questions just about anything. Uh, doesn't have to be about the art. I'm just going to be on here for a bit talking. Mostly, I guess, now at this point to entertain myself. Maybe entertain you. I'm not sure. Who knows? So, here we go. We just keep on going, going, going. Um, but, yeah. Sculpture. Um, you know, I, 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 I went to Pearl River Community College Wednesday to install a solo show there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Matt Gordon, for inviting me up to display my my work and 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 giving me the opportunity to talk to your your ceramic students that you had there and uh, one of them asked me this question and it was a pretty interesting question I mean, you get this question a lot and the question was um do you ever just make art for emotion just to get things out and i honestly had to stop and i was like you know let me think about that for a second and the answer is no and yes, at the same time. Um, because I don't just throw things together or, you know, go, you know, very emotional, abstract expressionist, make that stuff happen, um, you know, throw paint on a canvas or something. Or, you know, I, uh, my work is is very emotional for me because I'm dealing with all of these personal issues, but they're not just my personal issues. They're everybody's personal issues. Everybody has, has uh, self-esteem issues. I don't know a person who doesn't have self-esteem issues. Um, I'm sure there might be people out there, but everybody I know has, has these personal issues. They have these things that affect them. So, I'm just working through my, I guess, emotional aspects of those things through these these pieces. So it was kind of a yes and no answer. Um, so I guess I can pose that question to y'all. Do you ever just make art for, you know, to get the emotions out there? And I guess be therapeutic? And of course, we all know art can be very therapeutic. Um, as an artist, if I'm not making art, uh, my wife will tell you 
If I go too long without making art, I'm a right bastard. Um, I just become miserable. So I guess in a way, yes, I am always making art as an emotional release. Um, but I don't view it as an emotional release. I just view it as a way of communicating things that sometimes can't be communicated through words. Um, um, but back to the, uh, the solo show. Yeah, if you happen to be up in Pearl River, Poplarville, Mississippi, swing on by Pearl River Community College and you can go ahead and take a look at some of the pieces from this particular series on display again. Um, trying to get more work on display, get more stuff out there, <clears throat> especially from the sculptural aspect. I uh, love, I love making functional work, but I, I I'm a sculptor. I, it's what I do. I make things, tools. I'm a sculptor. Anybody else a sculptor out there? Just me. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah, making the pieces, working on it, breaking the rules that I learned I'm not supposed to be breaking. So if you like breaking rules, I guess I'm someone to follow. If you don't like breaking rules, then uh, don't let your students follow me or follow my uh, ridiculous techniques. But this is it. This is, this, is, this is how I create these pieces. Each one of my sculptures, if you click back through and you see the ones that have all been built recently showing showing the uh, process. They all start with a, a, a solid paper armature and then they go from there and we start getting the basic form. They get clay slapped over the top of that armature. Just like this one, there is a paper armature in here. So when it's, it's ready, I will flip this bad boy upside down and disembowel it like a Thanksgiving Day turkey. Get the giblets out from the inside. Um, and I do that, I mean, I do it because I've got, I'm gonna have so much paper in my kiln. Uh, if I don't, it will smoke out my studio for days and days, and I don't want, I, I, I like to work in my studio, so I don't want to smoke it out. So I also remove, it also helps in the drying process to take that that paper, which is gonna hold the moisture out of the inside. Uh, that I did post a little disemboweling of one of my sculptures earlier. Uh, you can take a look at that, it's a couple of posts back, in which I did remove all of the paper from the inside. It was a little tough getting my big hand inside of it, so I'm definitely going to make sure that I, when I build the basis for sculptures going in the future, there's a hole big enough for my hand to get in there because uh, it's a little tough and I had to kind of bend fingers into positions that they didn't want to bend to get it in there. Um, but once I did, boom, it was good to go. So we can work this out. Working on this hot dog bun here. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna like, I may add a little bit of, maybe I will put a little, well, I just said I wasn't gonna glaze my pots, but I might put a little bit of glaze just on this little guy right here. Uh, the hot dog to get that kind of sheen to it. Nah, just gonna wax it. Man, there's me waxing poetically about pots and such and making. I think I'm doing this mostly for my enjoyment and less for anything else, but Sundays in the studio, that's what I'm gonna call this little series. What I'm gonna try and try and do more of, let people into the process, let people know how I do these things, why I do these things, what's the meaning behind the artwork, maybe answer questions for people about the artwork. Um, so 
definitely looking pretty good. Let me puff it out a little bit more on this side. Got to work a little, little coil magic on this other side over here. But before I do so, coffee time. Let me rephrase that. Cold coffee time. It was cold in the studio when I came out, and my coffee's been sitting there. Now my coffee's cold, and I have no microwave in the studio, so can't can't add a micro can't can't warm it up. Well, I guess I could. I could put it in the kiln maybe for a little bit. I right, set the set my small kiln for like 100 degrees. Let it warm up. I'm just kind of keep my coffee in there. It's actually a good idea. I might have to start doing that in the wintertime. Hopefully, though, I won't have to do that for too much longer because I do live in the wonderful land of southern Mississippi and uh, our winters aren't terribly long or terribly bad, unlike our summers. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to keep on working here. Keep on doing that's about it, I guess, really. You know. Kind of push, and work, make this clay. And looking over the top of my glasses, getting old, the pain. So there you go, ladies and germs, uh, ladies and gentlemen, faithful viewers, followers. I guess we'll call this the. I mean, I've done various Instagram lives before, so uh, we'll call this one, uh, but we'll call this one, because I've decided I'm going to start doing it every Sunday, we'll call this the inaugural episode of Sundays in the Studio. Uh, we'll see how successful I will be with Sundays in the Studio. Anyways, there we go. Push this clay around here some more. I guess you're getting kind of tired of watching the top of my head and your screen while I move my fingers around. Probably a little difficult to see what my fingers are doing. Uh, so we'll bring it on down one last time. One, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving. So we're gonna come over here. All right, there's my cupcake. There's my hot dog. So what I've done is I've applied a a coil here to the outside of this hot dog bun and I am actually just kind of and at this point I'm doing it strictly by feel smoothing in so I can make that hot dog appear or that hot dog bun rather appear to be a little bit fatter um and that's it now I'll, I'll keep doing this I'll keep working I'll, I'll probably even create a little little uh coil to go across top here maybe make it look like some uh, ketchup uh, there is the hot dog hot dog belly button hot, hot dog belly button hashtag hot dog belly button y'all make that go viral right uh and so yeah uh for those of you who like throwing the wheel it's super bowl sunday so go make some soup or some bowls um i am going to continue working on this piece Working on this piece. It's kind of a small hot dog. It's a really big opening to the digestive tract, though. Uh, and um, so, yeah, you know, go be nice to people and uh, go make something. Go create something out of clay. And if you ain't got clay, just go create something. So uh, have a good Sunday. Talk to y'all later.